and welcome back to the podcast. Guys, I am so excited for today's chat. Uh, for those of you who may not know, I have been deep diving into the process of writing my first book. And this could not have come at a better time where I'm going to be bringing on a guest who is not new to this, but true to this, this journey of writing a book and being a best-selling author. So if you're excited about this conversation as much as I am, I want you to do a little dance, get excited, and let's go ahead and bring up our guest for today. We have the one and only Nelena Kai in the house. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I am so excited that you are here. We got to do a little pre-conversation before the podcast. And so I love everything that we talked about. And so I'm super excited that our listeners get to kind of hear what we've been chatting about on our own here. So can you give, you know, just because I know they heard your bio, but can you give us a little bit more about who you are and what type of author you are, just so we can get to know who we're talking to today? Indeed. Thanks so much. I am, as she said, Nelena Kai. I'm a USA Today and Essence Magazine international bestselling author of 38 books. I am a literary agent who has landed book deals for clients with traditional publishing houses, such as Harlequin, Simon & Schuster, and Macmillan. I am an Amazon influencer. I am a book coach and the book whisperer, the person that you come to when you're thinking about writing and publishing a book. And I will actually help you to do the damn thing because I believe everyone has a story to tell. And I'm just one of the people who can help you to tell it well. Back to okay. you. Okay, okay now. She was like, oh, you gonna let me tell me what I do? I was like, go ahead. <laughs> Shoot, you had that down. I gotta do my pitch better, because boy, she was like, let me let me tell you, if I only got a few seconds to be before you, I'm gonna let you know what I do, okay? <laughs> I love that. And so Thank for some of you who are new, uh, maybe you don't know what all that means, but just know she out here, she doing the work. She's not just talking the talk, she's walking the walk, okay? So th that's how you make it easy for people to understand. Because some of you are just contemplating that first book. Some of you are contemplating reading a book. <laughs> and so we wanna make sure that we break it down for you guys on our talk today. So let's let's talk about the stuff that I think a lot of people want to know about. Should everybody be writing a book or or do you think that only certain people should be authors? Authors. I think everyone has a story to tell. I say that truthfully. And some of them should be published and some of them probably should sit in the closet. But here's <laughs> if you're going to publish it, make sure you do it the right way, get it edited so it's not out there with a whole lot of errors. Go through the process. I have a book called The Right Stuff, and it's 99 cents. And in that book, it gets you started on the process of writing and knowing what you need to go through to put out a quality book. It's not just written by myself. It's also about 17 other of my writing tribe shared their writing and, and publishing experiences in that book to help other people to get published because we can't do one-on-ones with everybody. You know, there, there'll be people who come to book signings and they want to take up my entire line. But how did you get started with, honey, I got a line of like 15 people and I got to move some product here. So these, the bookstore will invite me back. So I used to put, you know, the most frequently asked questions on the website, but they began to be so expensive, uh, expansive. I said, you know what? Let's put it in a book. And then don't just look at my experiences get the experiences of my writing tribe who are some of them are debut authors but the majority of, of them are national best-selling authors as well amazing guys there's no excuse 99 cents you cannot be no <laughs> so i think that that might be a great first step so if you're listening to this podcast and you're liking the things that she's talking about and you want to learn more definitely that's the next best step for you is to go ahead and grab that book and then the coolest part is once you know what you're looking for right sometimes you don't even know what questions to ask then reach out because then you got some educated questions and then she can let you know if she can or can't work with you because like i said this lady's booked and busy so, so we go see if we can get you on her schedule but the book is there which is nice because it's it's available for all of us so definitely take advantage of that indeed so, i'm right now booked and busy hold up to <laughs> <laughs> Not on my vision board. Booked and busy. She there we go. And busy. I didn't said it. It's here. By the time you guys see this, she will be booked and busy. Full <laughs> stop. Okay. So you mentioned bestseller a couple of times. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Is it only one way to be a bestseller? Because I hear some people say, like, I'm a New York Times bestseller, I'm an Amazon bestseller. Now I'm hearing you say a national bestseller. <laughs> what what is the difference? There are different platforms that have different criteria for like New York Times bestsellers. There are certain bookstores that report to that listing. And it is a matter of not just 
trade paperback sales, but ebook sales. And you have to have so many of them. And most times when you're with a major house, they do pre-sales. They have relationship with these bookstores and these chains where they can sell thousands and thousands of copies even before the book goes to press. So they kind of know who's going to hit that list. So there's the Washington Post list. There's all of these different lists. Back in my day, Essence Magazine had a list and they stopped doing it. It was the Blackboard list first and then it became Essence Magazine. Then you'll see Amazon bestsellers list. And that's according to rankings. You may put a book out there and on your first day, you become a bestseller in um, the genre in which you're writing that book. So it could be mystery, romance, or whatever category you put it in. But it, it changes from hour to hour. But if you have a concentrated amount of sales uh, on that first day, you're more than likely going to hit bestseller status. What you want to hit is number one bestseller status, but also two, I did a 30-day writing challenge and I had four women who had never written before. They hit number one, but they didn't just hit it for one day or one week. They stayed number one for several weeks at a time. And that was new because I haven't even accomplished that. So I met those women on Clubhouse and took them through a 30-day writing challenge. And they succeeded even further than some of the vets. So different bestsellers lists have a different um, way of calculating those sales. But it all, trust me, but it is about book sales. Okay, makes sense. We got to sell the books, guys. There's no there's no shortcut around yeah. that. Um, yeah. But you did mention um, publishing houses, and I have a very limited amount of understanding. I know you can self-publish. I know there's small houses. And then I've heard of like the big ones in New York. So can you break it down for us, people who may have not, not you know, so familiar with this idea of like different ways to publish? Okay. What is with the houses? Okay, so first let's start from the Started from the bottom, now we're here. So, so <laughs> there's self-publishing or independently publishing where you're doing everything yourself. You have to do the the writing, the editing, the beta reads, the, uh, all of the different editing. There's three different types, developmental content line in it. Then there's beta reads and proofreading. Then there's cover design. Then getting your ISBNs. Then your interior layout. You do all of that yourself. Then there's the vanity publishers, where you pay somebody to do all of the stuff that I just said. Then you have the small houses. They are the mid-list publishers. They publish other people, uh, and they pay you royalties uh, for the books that you sell, but they also have a little bit of control over your process. Now, when you get with the big dogs, uh, that is the traditional publishing houses. We used to call them the big six, but now that right about now, they're a big Four because they've been absorb, absorbed into each other and merged and all of this stuff. So you've got Simon and Schuster, you've got um, Macmillan, you have Kensington, you have how, who, who, Penguin Random House, Harlequin. All of these places, they're the big names in there. And that's where they take your book, they pay you a royalty. Sometimes it's anywhere from 7% to 10% on the retail cost of the book but they have creative control over the cover as well as the content as well as well as the delivery date it can change according to you know like the pandemic there was a whole lot of books that were held back because you know the shortage of paper at one point in time paper was an issue and sometimes it made the people miss their deadlines so there was a there's a lot of factors in there I suggest people become self-published because then you learn the industry and then you learn what you're giving up and what you're getting if you decide to sign with a major publishing house. But you can't know all of that unless you've been, to me, you've been through the process. And especially if it's the book, if it's the book of your heart and you don't want anybody tampering with it, publish it yourself. That way you get it exactly the way you want it. Now, the next book, after you generate enough sales and everything, the next book's then go for another publishing house. And if you're going to do it, if you're not going to do it yourself, go for a major publishing house. Because I think at certain times, you know, vanity presses, as well as some independents, they can't do any more for you than you can do for yourself. Because regardless of where you publish, you're still going to have to get out there and hustle and market and promote it yourself, no matter what kind of house you're with. Yeah, I think that's really sound advice. I always tell people, because they're like, well, I want to do the big publishers. But I was like, do you realize <laughs> that in order to get there, you, most of the time you're going to need an agent. And then they're really struggling because they're like, oh, I don't even know how to like query write or anything. And they're struggling. And so I'm like, you know, 
if you're really passionate about this, especially because I work with business owners. And so usually their books are assets to their business. I'm like, mm -hmm. you just need to get that thing out because if it yeah. takes you years to get an agent to even say, maybe, <laughs> then it takes the agent time to pitch it to the house. It's like, oh my goodness. Oh, wait a minute. Miss that. Nowadays, some of them can, uh, some of the editors at major houses, they sometimes mm -hmm. go to events where oh. authors are able to pitch directly to them. So it cuts out the, the middleman in the beginning, but then you have to probably cycle back around and get the literary agent because they need to walk you through the contracts. But mm -hmm. that cuts through it. If you walk to the table with a deal already and, and they may even recommend somebody for you to sign with that they work with. I'm a literary agent, so I know. And I've had literary agents, but every deal that I've landed, I've landed on my own. Okay now, okay now. Look, the accolades keep coming. Right yeah, at the right place at the right time. That's that's yes. what's but look, don't don't shortcut yourself like they said the right place at the right time but you also was the right one okay like you had the goods because i went to one writing event and the overwhelming thing i realized because i was trying to find all the loopholes y'all i ain't gonna lie to you i was like look i just gotta get this thing out um the one thing that i understood more than anything else is no matter what you got going on who you know you still gotta have a good book at the end of the day <laughs> like you gotta have yeah. something people want to read hard. Good book, it's, a unique one because people are writing the same sub. There's nothing new under the sun. Take my yes. book, Every Woman Needs a Wife. Infidelity had been done to death, but had it been done quite the way that I had done it, where uh, a woman walks in on the husband and the mistress and says, if you're going to cheat, I need to get something out of it. So the mistress needs to come home, clean my house, keep the kids and put some money hey. on it. So that title, the cover and the concept is what made me stand out. Was it the best book since sliced cheese? No, I was still learning the craft back then. Now, some of the stuff I put out in the last two, three years, that's okay now. Stuff. <laughs> but starting out in the gate, it was the it was the title, it was the cover, it was the concept that made me stand out more so than my writing. I'm still I'm in the industry 24 years, and I'm still learning the craft. You have to forever be a student of the craft because things are changing. When I first started. You could write about a blade of grass for five pages describing everything. Now people have short attention spans. Mm -hmm. You have to write from the action to the action. So the days of doing that much description went from five pages to five lines or five words, if, if that. So you have to be able to learn and keep up with the trends, keep up with what readers are looking for. And sometimes it ebbs and flows. They want romance. Then they go to literary. Then they go to paranormal or science fiction. And then they cycle back. Same way with covers. My son is the premier graphic designer. He's Woodson Creative Studios. He's, I noticed the font changes. He said now he goes with the major publishing houses. The major publishing houses are doing sans serif as, as the font on a cover then that's what he does because mm -hmm. he wants your book to have a fighting chance along the on the shelves with everyone else's. And if it goes back into script, it switches and it changes and you have to learn the craft, but you also have to study the trends as well and the industry. I love that. And can we can we can we note the family of excellence there? Like we have the 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 the, the best seller out here selling all the books, and then we got our son who is just the knocking the ball out of the park with the with the covers, y'all. Those yeah. of you who can watch, if you're watching the podcast, you actually can see. Uh, hold on, let me let me make it bigger for you guys. Those of you who are watching the podcast can see um, the amazing covers that her amazing son has done. Um, and these are just a few guys. It's just a few yeah. uh, of his ama of his amazing work. But look, and and he's. He's booked and busy as well. Booked yeah, and busy as well. Just shift over just a little bit, just a little bit. There okay. you go. There you go. But yes. <laughs> so look, if you're interested, again, hit them up because um they, they out here getting in work. But I love that you mentioned like not just kind of resting on the idea of like, oh, I'm an author. Just mm -hmm. like with business, being an author is a business as well because you do have to understand what's going on in your industry you have to be someone who's constantly studying their craft and, and paying attention because like you said things change um and they change like the wind blows y'all <laughs> it's like every other day so if you're not you know kind of connected into the community you're going to be lost and so i would say for anybody who is listening um who's thinking about even if you being an author is not your 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 thing like you're not going to be an author just for the sake of being an author like maybe you're a speaker or like i said most of you who are listening are business owners and you're going to be leveraging this book as an asset mm -hmm. i still want you to realize you have to still be be in the industry you have to pay attention like i said i went to a, a writer's event i've been connecting with authors like our amazing um speaker here with us today 
and I've been connecting with other writers and editors and agents because I need to to know what's going on. I've also have it, been having to read books. <laughs> Lord help me, y'all. I don't like to read. I ain't gonna lie to you, but I've been having to read books in my industry or in the in the niche that I'm trying to write a book in because I mm -hmm. don't know what the reader is looking for because I'm not a a regular author um right. and so i think we can't be lazy y'all gonna hear that word a lot for me in this podcast series we can't be lazy if we really want to put out good quality things we're gonna have to be willing to invest in the work and invest in the people that can help us right because a lot of us trying to do this fast <laughs> and i get it but we got to invest in the people then with the 20 plus years in the game right because yeah. we can't yeah. just expect them to but we can't stand in the line and expect to take up all your time we're gonna have to invest in that time so that we can get the knowledge that they have to speed up our process yeah so with that in mind uh because like i said like I'm, I'm gonna make sure i get all my questions in with i that know that's mind, right i am not mad with you i am not <laughs> mad with you <laughs> with that in mind what are the steps of and i know it may vary everybody has their process but what are the steps of um like a beginner's writing process like you got an idea for a book what are the steps we should be thinking about first of all you should pick up a copy of the right stuff and there's another one uh that i would like for you to pick up it's called the blueprint for writing and publishing it's one i did with my son who took a seven page english assignment and he created an entire novel at 15 was published at 16 and then later he got um a book deal with simon and schuster so it can start from something that small and may, but the thing about it is you've got to get it from your head to the page what I say, if you're writing nonfiction, you write about 15, write down 15 things that you want to cover or topics that you want to cover in this book. And you don't have to write it in chronological order. You can just make the list. And then whatever you feel like writing on a particular day, say, okay, I want to write number five. Okay, I want to write number seven. And the thing about it is, you'll know where it all falls in at the end. It's just getting it on the page. Some people can write it or some people have, you know, I write longhand. And then I let the software, you know, type it up for me. And then there's some people who have to sit at the computer and do it. And then there's some people who just record it straight out and let their thoughts roll and do it that way. Or get with your editor or um, a team leader and let you all do a Zoom and then transcribe it that way. There's many ways for you to get the book out of your head, but it comes to life when it's on the page. That's first and foremost. If you're writing fiction, please, please, please. Please, please read <laughs> the genre in which you're writing in. So if you're if you're writing romance, please hit up some some of the best, the top Harlequin authors. There's Brenda Jackson. There's Martha Kennerson. There's Kathy Douglas. There's uh, Beverly Jenkins. If you're writing uh, historical uh, romance, Beverly Jenkins definitely. So read in the genre in which you're writing. If you're writing mystery and thrillers, then you want to study Stephen uh, Stephanie M. Freeman. Or Shakira Rashan, if you want to do erotica, definitely Shakira Rashan. And if you want to write something that has more culture to it or writing about a different geographic area, then you want to hit up J.L. Campbell. She's from Jamaica, so there's a touch of Jamaica in every book that she's read. And if you want to read how a young Black girl from the south side of Chicago went from writing to publishing to bestseller, then you can pick up one of my books. A little bit of my history is in My Time in the Sun. Uh, you can also read Lo Loving Me for Me is another one by me you, that you can read and say, okay, if she did this, I can do this. Open Door Marriage, definitely. But there's also a free book on my website, uh, Sugar Ain't So Sweet. If you go to my website, pick that up. It's short, sweet, and it can give you an idea. Okay, I can, I can do this. And it, but study the craft, study the top people in the genre in which you're writing in, but get it on the page. That's the first thing. We can work with uh, something on the page. We can't work with an empty page. Okay, now, and uh, go ahead and plug it in. She said, you better buy my book. I hear you. We got we got a free book, a 99 mm -hmm. cent book. Well, there's and actually we got six books on the website. There's two okay. cookbooks. Well, I did two cookbooks with my, with my writing tribe, so. Okay, look, cookbooks, is that something you didn't do? <laughs> that might be a shorter list. What haven't you written about? Because I was like, you got a little this, a little that. I love it. She got something for everybody, y'all. No excuses. Yeah. I love that. And, and I love what you said. Like, they can't work with something that isn't on the page. And I think for me, 
that was one of the hardest things I had to understand. I was like, I want this book done, but I, I want it done. I don't know about the part, parts in the middle, but what I found that worked for me, somebody, one, who's visually challenged, um, and two, uh, just is not very enthusiastic about actually writing down is I found somebody to talk with and then transcribe. So that was the way I went. So I love that you mentioned that is yeah. we just have conversations, we record them, and then we fill in the gaps through like conversation. I've also had friends who do it interview style where they get somebody to ask them questions based on the content they want to put out and they can respond. Because some of your, like I said, most of your coaches, your consultants, your service base. And so I know you know the stuff you want to talk about, but you just may not be a writer at heart. So don't think because you're not a traditional writer in the sense that most of us think that you can't get out a book, but eventually it got to get on paper, on a pad, on yeah. a computer, something, because then again, we can hire the experts. I'm gonna keep saying hire the experts because I know most of you ain't trying to, to figure this out alone. Hire the experts to get you to that next stage. And like she said, we're gonna, we're gonna harp on this. Make sure you get some editors. We don't want to do all this work to go out here and have grammatical errors, have stuff that don't make sense. It's not transitioning well. Like, we don't want to look bad, y'all. Just get somebody to do it. Pay the little bit of money. Like, I say a little bit of money, but pay the money. And, and get somebody to really, several people sometimes go through it. Because I know even for small publishing houses, they'll have their editors with an S at the end several. go through. Yeah. So your cousin Buki, who reads well, is not just going to be your editor, right? Susie down the street who got real good grammar is not just your editor. Several people, preferably tr true editors, need to go through your book to make sure what you're putting out is of quality. Because that's what yes. it's about, putting out quality. It's your names attached. When they turn that book over and see your picture, <laughs> and you want them to be like, oh, this was good. Don't have them turn it over and be like, who wrote this mess? Because <laughs> they're going to be okay. upset. <laughs> and we yeah. don't want that. So they wrote the book. Um, we've kind of talked about like which house they're going to go to. Can you give us any tips on like how to market the book? Because a lot of people may have even wrote some books that ain't seen the light of day. Like they sitting on a shelf somewhere. They mama bought a couple copies and that's it. So how do we do a little bit of marketing of these books? So there's a book for that called okay. The Marketing Stuff. I have the right stuff and then I have the marketing stuff. So for people who have published, but what I... I learned from Victoria Christopher Murray. She is a New York Times bestselling author. And what she has always told us is cover your own backyard. Right there. There's people who think this whole thing is expansive and I'm going to do tours. I'm going to do this, that, and the third. And no, cover your, there's libraries. If every library in your city carries your book, how many book sales is that? Okay, now. There's bookstores. There are places that and, and events vending events that you can do you can pay for a table and and you know sell books that way cover your own backyard then cover the backyard of where your family is originally from so okay my family we you know though we're still on the south side of chicago my mom is originally from marshall texas and we got family in what dallas texas and my son lives down there in houston now so of course i cover my own backyard here and then what i'll slide in where I can sleep on the couch or a bed, guest room or whatever, <laughs> and cover that backyard. That's a weekend. They can deal with me for a weekend. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so if you're originally from Arkansas, if you're really originally from St. Louis, wherever you live now, start there. And then branch out to the surrounding suburbs and areas and go from that way. Who was it? Was it JC that said, keep hustling until everybody knows your name? Okay, now. I like that. She said, keep hustling till everybody knows your name. I, I hear you. I'm look, writing it down because that's <laughs> what I want to do. Y'all y'all think I'm joking. By the time you guys hear this podcast, I think my book will be about ready to come out. And y'all, my words, I'm going to be like, I, I did all the stuff she said, y'all. I got the 99 cent book. I got the writing one. I got the marketing one. <laughs> like, I want to be able to hold it up and be like, I got a bestseller too, y'all. So I am I am with it. I love all the information that you've given and I think for those of you who are still kind of teeter tottering on the fence of like, should I write this book? Can I write this book? Hopefully this conversation lets you know that you have a story because we've covered that. You're going to get it out of you and onto the page. 
You're going to get somebody to edit that sucker. You're going to decide what publishing method you want to do. But if you've never done it before, definitely try yourself publishing first. So you get it. I love that that tip you gave. And then we're going to get this done. We're going to hustle until everybody knows our name. So we got a whole plan. She done gave us a whole strategy, y'all. Whole strategy. Again, no excuses. Because when we're in doubt, we got that 99 cent book to fall back on. <laughs> okay. The marketing stuff and the right stuff are both 99 cents now. The okay. big juicy one, the one I did with my son, um, the blueprint for writing and publishing, that one I think is about five ninety nine. It's still the best investment. If you're reading all three of those, you're kind of set for at least knowing what you're about to get into. But also too, I want people, I'm going to cycle back to something you said earlier about know that celebrities, they have to turn to the expert to get their books done. Most times if they have um, a book being done by a publishing house, they pair them up with a ghostwriter or something, someone to help to get the book out. So far be it from you not to get someone to help you to birth that book. We're the midwife. You're for definitely carrying the book to term, but you have to what? Turn, go to a doctor, go to a midwife, whatever, to finish the rest of the process. Also, people have the mindset that the book has to be yay big. No, <laughs> thinking of quality over quantity. I was, um, I work at a law firm during the day and wonderful, I work for wonderful, wonderful attorneys. and. She was explaining something that I saw in a, in a power of attorney for healthcare. And the question was, is it quality of life over quantity of life? Do you want them to prolong your life no matter what? Or do you want them to only prolong it if they can, if you're going to recover or whatever? So people have that choice to make same way with the book. Quality over quantity. Keep that in mind. As long as your book has something of substance. Start, uh, and if you're going to write fiction, you may want to start with a short story so you can learn the craft and it doesn't cost as much as if you put out 300 pages of something and have to go back and fix and fix and fix it. And that's more costly. Do a mm -hmm. book that's 80 pages or whatever, a short story, learn the craft in that genre. And then the editing, that's the difference of paying, sometimes editing is five to $10 per page. You're paying that for a 60 page book versus a 300 page books. And that's a lot more work for you to get it all together. You know, developmental editing is where I suggest you start when you're writing fiction, because most people think of line editing. That's the grammar, the punctuation, mm -hmm. and con consistency, continuity, all of that. That's line editing. There's developmental editing, content editing, line editing, then there's proofreading, there's beta reading, there's also alpha readers that read it ahead of time before you go into all of the other editing to see if the book is even like up to par, like, am I crazy or what? <laughs> so there's all of these people that you can pull together to help you to put out a quality project. And no one editor can catch everything. Shoot, and most readers, most authors laugh about this. I don't catch my errors until I push print. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, dang it, look at that. Yeah. How, how did that get through? I'm telling you, I, I see know. it. I have a lot of clients with books and they say that they're like, oh my goodness. Wow. And don't get your feelings hurt, y'all. So look, I would tell you this. You remember back in school when you had that teacher that marked up that paper with all the red? That's how editors be, man. Don't get your feelings hurt. You going that's your baby. I get it. But they're going to see that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Because then you're getting your money's worth. I've I've gone to editors that have have been in the industry longer than I am because I'm actually having them edit my stuff so I can learn something from them because I'm an editor. Even mm -hmm. though I'm an editor, I have several editors. So when I, and then when one person gave it back, it was so little red on there, I felt cheated. And I said, I know I can write, but I'm not that damn good. And then I, <laughs> one of my regular editors, Janice Allen, she towed that thing up. So I felt some kind of way that I went outside of my circle to get edited. And what it felt like was a manuscript evaluation. And this was a top tier editor. And I was like, I was so disappointed. I felt it was a waste of money. You want somebody to beat that thing up because let me tell you, who's going to beat it up for you if you don't do it on the front end? The readers. Those mm -hmm. reviews can be killer. So you want somebody to tear that thing apart and help you put it back together? I'm a different kind of editor. I have one person that I just did and we've done several Zooms. We've been on several phone calls. Most editing, they do it. They throw it back at you. You may ask them a few questions by email. No, if I take you on as a client, I am with you through this process. 
I edit the first two chapters. I'm throwing that back at you while I'm editing three and four. So we're revolving those chapters. So by the time we get to the end, you should be two chapters behind me. And if there's any major issues, we've corrected them and worked that on the way through. Here's the thing. There's sometimes I get 30 pages in and I, and I have to decide. Let me tell you something. You need to apply everything that you're learning here. We do a plot a call and all of these things. Because if I keep editing throughout the way this story is going, you're going to need another editor. If you don't fix this, you're going to need another edit, full mm -hmm. development edit when I get through. And I've had to do that 25 pages in, 30 pages in, throw it back at them. Let's work out some things here so you can apply and give me the best of what you have now that you've learned all of these things. So when I'm editing, I'm editing with the best that you can put on the page with all the kinks that we can possibly work out, worked out versus me editing the wrong stuff. And I know it's wrong. That's amazing. And you want somebody like that. I always say the people that I usually bring in, especially like freelance wise or like project based, I want them to be the best and I want them to be honest. Like you don't want somebody just saying, yes, good job. It's the best thing ever. No. What is the tea? Like, tell me, because if they don't tell you, like you said, the public will, and Ooh, then you really don't get your feelings hurt. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they don't care. You know, your family going to tell you, oh, good job. Love you. <laughs> but readers, they don't have any loyalty to you. And mm. they will tell you if you if your stuff is jacked up. You know, and yeah. I look at edits. I look at edits, you know, reviews, I'm sorry. And I'll say, is it valid? Now, there was some at the beginning of my writing career. I was a lengthy writer. I'm working on a book right now of mine that I wrote 18 years ago. It was 108,000 108, words. Lord, it's it's fiction. It's science fiction you can be that long. But 108,000 words, no. I end up having to chop it down first to 69,000. No, 85, then 69, then 52, then 39, and rebuild. And then my beta reader said, I love you, but I know you're going to submit this to get a book deal, uh, you got to cut those first six chapters. What? First, <laughs> and she was right. The action happened there. Now I tried to, and I was able to add three chapters in, back in, but only two made it because another editor said, if you're not married to this, you need to cut this. I'm like, damn. Mm. So, and I, <laughs> and I listen because it makes the book better paced, better writing, all of that. People have short attention spans. I read a, it's a well-known author that dropped a book a couple, a few days ago. And I looked at some of the reviews because I'm in the reader spaces on in Facebook groups. So I hear what people, the readers are saying about other people's books. And one person nailed it. And I know this particular publishing house that this uh, author is with. They like long books because they like to put them in hardcover. So they want 75, 80, 90,000 words. Okay. But sometimes the story really ends at 55, 60, and readers can tell if you have fluffed the rest of it. Somebody says, seemed like she gave up at such and such and such, but she had to keep going for count. Now, a reader said that, and other people said, oh, God, I thought it was just me. I thought it was just me. And the thing about it is, but in the back of my mind, I know who she's writing for, and they want that word count. But sometimes you have to tell the story until it's done and tighten it up. Self-published, you can it can be small, it can be whatever, but when you're with a major house, sometimes they do want that word count, but you have to make sure that the story is viable and it doesn't look like you're just throwing the kitchen sink in there to keep the party going. Amen to that. I love that we're getting all of these like behind the scenes, pulling back the curtain and getting the real tea because a lot of you are like, oh, hey, no, it was going to be like that. Yeah, like it's like that. And the one thing I've learned just from the beginnings of this process, because we help, um, with some people doing a few of their uh, self-publishing tasks that they have to do is y'all they be charging per page for stuff like these they, like we thinking for we usually pay things per per finished product oh no they charging per page per word it's like what is this like you're like what are these numbers they're like how many words is it uh didn't know i needed to know how many pages is it because i'm charging this much per page i'm like well hold on let's take some of these pages out because that's a lot so <laughs> it's important for you to know and this is why you have to be educated in the industry of course you're not going to know everything but you got to know some basics because you're going to get out here and get your feelings hurt if you don't okay and so. get a developmental editor. I'm telling you, if you're fiction and this is your first time dipping your toe in the water, get a developmental editor. 
develop, I'm a different kind of developmental editor. I'm a teaching editor. I'm going to edit for the formula in which you're writing in. So there's things I need to know. If you're writing a mystery, somebody needs to be dead or dying on the, in that first chapter. So there's things you have to know for the genre that you're writing in. But I also am teaching you the elements of writing because if this is your first time, I'm the editor that I wish I had starting out. Mm. You know, I had the line editor that, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, make sure this. But as far, it took going to another editor after I was in a bookstore. And the owner of the bookstore said, you know, your book is the best self-published book in the store. She's from Trinidad, so it had an accent. And I said, okay, best self-published book in the store. I said, what keeps it from being the best published book in the store? And she says, you know, your book's so good, but they're missing that something. Well, it took me getting to another editor, uh, Susan Mary Malone got me to the page turn of quality and also character development, all of these things. There are some people who are so afraid of touching voice and not understanding the difference between voice and making sure the delivery is good, that they let things slide that they should not. And it's not just about the errors. It's not just about the grammar and the punctuation. It is the flow. It is the pacing. It is the theme. It is the setting. It is the foreshadowing. All of these things is which I learned with Susan, and she was my editor for a few years before she kicked me to the curb. She said, uh, Lisa, don't send me another one of your books to edit. I was like, why? She said, do you notice that it comes back with less and less and less and less and less read now? She said, actually, with the way you write, you can edit. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> so I started the process. And she's right, sometimes I'm better at working on other people's stuff than working on my own. That's why I have to have my editor to tell me, I'm easy to tell you to cut your six chapters. But Lord, <laughs> I am an author at the point that my editor says, no, you got to cut these six chapters or on open door marriage. Uh, no, one editor was so mad at me. She said, there's no right way to do a wrong thing. I was like, okay. So I had to change my ending. And then she wrote a book that was called No Right Way to Do a Wrong Thing. <laughs> Like full circle moment there. That's Indeed. cool. Indeed. But look, look, we're running out of time. So guys, we could have talked forever and ever. And hopefully we'll have more chances to talk to you and hopefully get to talk to your son one day soon. Cause I'm trying to know, but look, I need to know about my cover too. Uh, yeah. but, he is the but, best. He is. Yes. I'm not saying it because he's my son. He's with covers the way that I am with words. He is, and he's mm -hmm. also an author. So he understands the industry. He was nominated for NAACP Image Award. And with him getting the book deal with the major house at a young age, he went a lot further in places in the industry than I did. But understanding covers, he has to read a little bit of your work. He has to read the synopsis, some of the chapters. Sometimes if it's good, he wants to read the whole thing. I'm a little jealous because he hasn't read the whole thing of mine. But I get it, too, because I write romance chapters. And when he wrote a book that had some romance in there, I had to pass that chapter off to somebody because <laughs> I couldn't read his stuff. So I, I finally understood that. But the Woodson Collection, he has pre-made covers. The Woodson Collection, if you want custom-made, it is Woodson Creative Studio. Okay, Woodson Creative Studio. So definitely look, check out this family living in excellence when it comes to everything from the beginning to the end of the book writing process and publishing process. So definitely check them out. I just want to thank you so much for um, all of the knowledge that you dropped on this podcast. Guys, if you enjoyed this, please do follow up with her in the show notes. We'll have all her links. Uh, buy the books. Uh, look, she already gave you one for free. Go grab it. No excuses. She got two 99 cent ones, a $5 and some change, and then tons more. And then, of course, connect with her on social media. Look, see who she's following and follow them. She dropped all them names up in here for people that are doing amazing things in the industry. I want you guys to take action on this podcast. If no other podcast you listen to, if you have been thinking about writing a book, obviously this is the time. You're hearing it now. You got a process to get started. Don't let another year go by where that book stays in your head. Get it on the page and get it into your audience's hands. But guys, if you enjoyed this podcast and um, you just got so much value from it, I encourage you to listen to previous podcasts we've released already. And remember, we drop a new podcast episode every single week. And until next time, guys, remember, I rock, you rock, we all rock, and we will talk to you soon.